Oh, no. Oh, no. We Okay. Okay. We're going to have to do Tinder another day. All right. Listen. Listen. We're going to go ahead and talk about this real quick because I don't have much time. All right. Sorry about that. We're going to stay in there. But so I know a lot of you probably watch videos and or like look up stuff and try and figure out what dating's like in places like Japan versus where you're from. And I'll say this, all right? So let's just go with America. In America, the simplest way to meet someone beyond doing beyond doing the online dating is to go out. You go out somewhere, you're in a grocery store, you're at the library, if that still exists, a, a bookstore, if they still exist, out shopping, all right, out shopping, you hit the mall, you know, driving down the street, you might pull up at a convenience store, you might pull up to the gas pump, meet a female, you go out to the bar, you go out have dinner, whatever the case may be, meet a female, you go out to, uh, to a nightclub, meet a female, if you got, if you have the ability to, you might go up, say what's up, have conversation, get to know each other. You could be walking down the street, lock eyes, hold up, hey, what's your name? Go from that point. There's a different etiquette to it when you're in different places, though. One of the craziest things about Japan that I don't think a lot of people realize is that when you're walking down the street, People really don't look at each other in the face. If they do, there's usually a reason be behind it. But for the most part, everybody just is looking straight forward, or got their head in their in their uh, their eyes on their phone, but still, you know, knowing what's going on around them. And boom, you're moving to your destination. You get gone. That's it. And when it comes to foreigners, and it doesn't matter what kind of foreigner you are. A lot of time, people won't, like, they'll try not to recognize you on some level. And I'll tell you, so, while I was in Akihabara, I don't know if you guys got to watch that video yet uh, on YouTube or not, but while I was in Akihabara, one of the things I noticed was that, you know, there were girls, they were out there doing, like, little photo shoots on the corner, some of them trying to get into the, uh, the idol life, because that's a very real thing. It's a very real thing here. Or, you know, trying to boost the IG pages, which everybody is trying to do out here from what it looks like. Photography or, like, wannabe photographers and, you know, IG models and everything else. It's a big thing for people out here. But one of the things I noticed, so as I'm walking down the, uh, the street, there's girls, they're handing out flyers and everything else. And you'll, you'll find that in places like Akihabara as well as in uh, Hopongi where I'm going today. You'll see that a lot. But one of the girls specifically, it really got me because I caught her. I was, I was probably a good 20 feet away from her. But she saw me and she stared at me, but then she took her eyes off of me and then she kept looking back up as I'm walking towards her. So as I got maybe two feet away from her, I, I just looked over at her, like, Konnichiwa, o genki desu ka? And then she just, I mean, the biggest fucking smile. Like, I lit, her face lit up. You know, had a quick uh, conversation with her, and then just went about my business while I was there. And... I saw that actually happen a couple different times. And, you know, it's a thing where I was used to in the States where somebody, you, you notice somebody or you recognize somebody or just out of the pleasantries, you might, get a, you might give a head nod, you know, what's up, say what's up, something like that, and go about it. Here, I'm more so attuned to how people act and react out here because of the fact of, you know, having grown up here, everything else too. But... One night, I decided, you know what, fuck it, I'm just, just going in. I see this girl, 
I was on my way to, where was I going? Oh, I was on my way to an izakaya. And we're crossing the street together, and we keep getting stuck at, at you know, the lights as we're crossing the streets. I look over for a second, and I notice that she was staring at me, so I just said, fuck it. I'm just going to go with it, go for it. Said hello to her, asked her how she was, you know, how her day had been, what's her name, gave her my name, and conversated for all of about a good three minutes. And in that three minutes, it was, all right, let's exchange information. Now, one of the things you'll learn out here is nobody really uses their phone, uses their phone. And what I mean by that is everybody buys data plans with no cellular service. If you do, it's more than likely for work or, you know, maybe, maybe for family, shit like that. But everybody uses uh, WhatsApp, Line, and then I forget the name of the other one. There's another... Um, another service kind of like that specifically here in Japan and is live another I forget there's there's like four or five different ones that I've had to that I've been asked do you have this and I'm like look I'll use WhatsApp and I'll use line I'm fine with that you know whatever so after that we made plans to go out the next girl I ended up meeting I actually met her online we talked for all of, like, what, almost the entire day. And she was like, all right, what's next? I'm like, all right, you want to get out? Let's go have drinks. Cool. The other two girls, out, out and about. One of them was at an actual bar. The other one was out on the street again. I Look, I, you cannot, there's certain things that's very hard for me to take out of the repertoire. And one of those things is being able to meet a female out in the streets. Like, it, it's just impossible for me to see somebody that I think is fine and be like, eh, whatever. I'll, I'll take the chance that I'm going to run into her again. Fuck that. No, like, we got to holler. We got to holler now. But anyway, so the first date, we went out, just had drinks. Met up. You know, we met in between where we both live. So she took, uh, actually, she got off work that night. And she was like 30 minutes away from where she wanted to meet. And I was 30 minutes away from where she wanted to meet. So we met there. We sat down, had drinks, chill, conversate, good conversation too. Good conversation. And at the end of it, she, the bill is coming over. The waitress was about to hand her the, uh, the, uh, the bill. And I went and I, re I reached for it. And she's going for her purse. And I'm like, no, no, no. And she goes, no, please let me, uh, you know, I should pay half too. And I'm just like, the fact that she asked that, I was like, really? Really? No. On me. We're good. After that, you know, she messages me, calls me up, and she's just like, that was really interesting because no one ever really does that. And I'm just like, well, you know, that's just the way – I felt about things like it, it was a good time for both of us, yada, yada. And I hope I didn't, you know, I didn't uh, insult you or disrespect you in, in any way. And she goes, no, but it's like a lot of times on the first date, you know, or especially if you just really get to know somebody in the beginning, the girls may want to like pay, you know, whatever. And she then she, she's like, so when are we going to see each other again? And that's who I'm going to go. I'm going to be seeing tonight anyway. So the next, <laughs> the next one. Oh, God, I don't even know how I'm going to tell this. I'm going to have to use some code, and I hope that y'all get it. All right. So we go out and we meet up. Drinks, dinner. The way dinner works a lot of times, like you'll be at a restaurant, and it's almost it almost has a feeling of like a, a tapas sort of situation. You'll order a couple of things, and then, of course, like during the conversation, you go back and order a couple more things and so on and so forth. just builds up. But anyway, so the end of this one, the girl tries to go for her fucking purse again. And I'm like, what the f Really? Really? I'm like, no. No. Got it. Got it. There's no tipping here either. That's the other thing. I had to become accustomed to that because the first day I, like, I got into a cab, and almost tipped him. And I forgot, I mean, after so many years of doing that, it's hard to, like, just pull yourself immediately out of it. But, uh, yeah, 
at the restaurant, you know, I'm going to pay. And then she stop as I'm putting the money down, she stops and puts a part of the bill down as well. And I look at her, she goes, no, my, like says, essentially my pleasure. And I'm like, all right. So we leave. And she asks, how far away from here are you? And I'm like, 45 minutes. What, uh, what train do we have to take? This I didn't expect. Like, fuck it. All right. So we hop on the train, get back, and we walk the rest of the way. Now, another thing that you will not commonly see in Japan is PDAs, public displays of affection, by any means. Now, I've seen a couple of them. They've been funny. Like, old man had his finger up his girl's ass. I'm like, I'm not even playing. He didn't just grab the cheeks. He stuck up in there. She, like, jumped. I was like, what the fuck? Yo, for real. But anyway, so except like holding hands and shit like that, you will see that. So we got like holding hands, we walk back, <sighs> get in, kissing, everything else, the touching. Next thing, else, she's like, "I want to, I want to uh, take a shower." Cool. This is a normal thing in Japan. Most people take showers at night instead of in the day, like in you know in America. Me. I'm prone to, like, I'll take one in the morning and one at night. But as she's going in there, reaches out, grabs me, and she goes, you're coming in too. Fuck it. Now, this is what really got me about this whole thing. Well, I'll take the shower, you know, it's the normal type of shit that's going on. But then she got down and starts, like, like, am I Jesus right now? Is she washing my feet like this? Like, what is happening? So, of course, your boy's sitting here on solid and... Just hits her at the top of the head. <laughs> I think y'all know what I'm getting at at that. But then, like, it's like, fuck it. Yo, listen, all I'm going to say is this. From that point on, it was a whole lot of shit that was happening for the next, like, it was seriously not even bullshit. It was like an hour and a half. And, like, we both just, like, chilled out, chopped it up for a minute, passed out, woke up in the morning. She didn't have to work that uh, that day, that next day. And then just went about our business, talked again, and I will see her again at some point in time this weekend. It's already been planned. Because people like to plan these things out. The next day kind of went exactly the fucking same. And the last one was one of those situations where it was it was cool, it was chill. It, I got the feeling myself personally, no matter how much we were, you know, interacting and everything else, <laughs> wasn't the toes. It wasn't the toes, bro. It wasn't the toes. Oh, uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but the next day, I got this, like, it was like, it was cool, but it was almost as if she, uh, to me, to me, it seemed like she was after something. And I was just like, ah. we had good conversation, everything else, but you, you just know when something's off with the person, you know, when you know it, you know it. And it doesn't matter where you are. You just fucking know. So anyway, on that one, like she went to uh, pay part of the bill, but I still, I, I paid 90% of the fucking bill. And she just paid like, it, she just paid like the other little bit of it. And I don't know why, but that one, to me, felt more okay for me to allow her to do so, only because of the fact that that was kind of the, the date that, you know, everyone else kind of told me about, where you were going to meet someone. And here's the crazier part about it, too, is, like, not every one of these, like, they didn't want to just go out to have dinner or whatever or go and, like, spend a bunch of money on something. It was like, let's meet for coffee. Let's meet for a beer. Women out here, uh, some, all women out here love beer. And I can understand it. Beer is good here. Like, beer is fucking fantastic. And then, of course, like, you know, drinking a little bit of sake, and then they find out I like tequila, and they're like, I've never tried that. And I'm like, you might want to be careful. But, yeah, that date was kind of that whole situation of getting, getting the feeling for someone. Even though I talked to her for a minute, it was like that in-person, you know, that second in-person sort of interaction was just like, nah. And 
it is what it is. We talk the next day, you know, we still talk here and there or whatever, but it's not one of those things where I'm just like actively like, hey, you know what, let's get out of game, you know, whatever. <clears throat> but anyway, so to kind of break some shit down for you, there's something that a couple of the girls told me too, and it was funny because originally they looked, when they saw me like look at them, they both had the same reaction. And that immediate reaction for them was, is something wrong with my face? I was like, really? So a lot of times here in Japan, if you stare at someone in the face, they, they are thinking there's something wrong with them. I've had people stare at me, and I understood the reason why. Once was because, like, the dude, like, he was so afraid to fucking ask me. He was like, bro, are you a YouTuber or, like, something like that, whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, but I also do photography. Right now I'm not recording. I'm just out doing photography. Like, I am a photographer. It's part of what I do in business and everything else. And then girls, they all, yo, yo, every girl, they're like, are your eyelashes real? I'm like, yes, Yes, they are. Do dudes out here get, like, fake eyelashes and shit? Another one was like, your eyebrows, they're so perfect and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, they'll look and they'll find these features. And then, of course, a lot of them will look at me. And then once I speak Japanese, they will always say, which one of your parents from Japanese? Because you can see it in your face, whatever. I'm like, okay, I get that. I get that. Fine. But for the most part, people just don't stare at each other. But when it comes to the women, they immediately get, you know, they feel like there's something wrong with them. And I asked them, I said, so in a place where some of the most beautiful people walk around, okay, I mean, I've met, just being here in this short span of time that I've been here now, models, CEOs. Women in high positions, low positions in business. Some bad, bad. And they're like, yeah. People don't usually stop and talk to us out on the streets. The conversations you will have while drinking, and it doesn't matter if the people know you or not. You could, in the izakaya that I was in the other night, that whole place was popping. We were all just conversating about everything because everybody felt so much more comfortable while they were drinking. But the girls told me, they were like, yeah, when, when they get looked at, they get very self-conscious and they think something's wrong with them. And I'm like, so in a place where some of the most beautiful people are walking around, people who maintain themselves quite amazingly, your first instinct is to go to there's something wrong with me versus... I look good. That is a drastic flip from living in America. It's a huge flip. The girls feel like, or the women feel like, on the first dates that they should, well, even in the getting to know you stage or even the first date, they feel like they should have some means of, uh, Oh, my God, I got to make a phone call in a little bit. But they should actually put forth at least an effort to try and pay the bill, which is unnecessary, but it's interesting to see. And at the same time, they want to cater to you in a way that you may have never been catered to <laughs> in your life. It's, it's, it's a very interesting thing. But to know that so many people are so disconnected here is insane. Like, they are extremely disconnected from one another in personal senses because of the way that their days move, the way that their lives is because of the culture in and of itself. And that's perfectly fine because you end up finding people you connect with in different ways. So work is a big thing. School is a big thing for them as well. If you're going to school, of course, that's how you're going to meet most of your friends. That's how you're going to meet possibly a significant other. 
if you're working, of course, you're going to meet most of your friends. It shows how much confidence matters. Yeah, you're going to meet most of your friends. You're going to meet most of the people that you end up dating in a work, uh, work scenario as well. And that's the funny thing that you say that is that it shows how much confidence matters. Well, confidence, for them, they have confidence in things like that. But certain things are just rude that may not have been considered rude somewhere else. And then it is a matter of, you know, self-visualization is another thing there. So maybe a little bit of a confidence issue. But it's not like that once you actually talk to them. But then, of course, it does, like, play a thing on my confidence in the in the uh, manner of still being able to approach someone in that manner. But it's not like I'm just doing it to anyone and, every, and everyone. And then I approach it in such a manner to where you can't feel uh, you can't feel like I'm trying to disrespect you in any way at all as well that's I think that's the bigger part of it and when I do and you know again it's that ability to speak the language as well that really it's like oh shit oh and I'm gonna say this now I haven't done anything with this person not done anything with this woman. That's why I'm not giving any names, no nada. There's one that wants to go with me. <laughs> she is married. And I'm like, what? I mean, that's something that just doesn't change anywhere you go in the world. It, it's going to happen. Infidelity is infidelity is infidelity. But I'm like, What? And then she broke it down as to why this was the case and so on and so forth. And I'm like, that is, okay, okay, all right. But will I do anything? Probably not, probably not. I, I don't like being that person. There's very few and far between scenarios where I will mess with a girl who is dating someone or like married. And usually it's a, it's a no, it's a no. But anyway, so yeah. In four days, I went out on four dates, and tonight I'm going out on another one with the, the very first girl that I went out on a date with, and I have plans for another one this weekend. And I'll say that it is a different experience. It's not as complicated as so many people make it out to be when they talk about it online or when they talk about it, you know, uh, in, their, in their articles or vlogs or whatever the case may be. It's really not. It's a matter of you simply knowing and learning your place. And <laughs> hey, yo, don't call me that. Don't call me that because I do shit. I didn't do nada. But it's you finding your place and your comfort where you're at, having the confidence to still do the things you would normally do, and knowing that there's a time, place, and setting for those things as well. And I can tell you, like, this is one of the reasons why alcohol does play such a prevalent role in this society is that it allows people to open up and be themselves. And there's no consequences behind it unless you want to fuck off your next day because of it. But there's no consequences in the things that you do here when you drink. You can talk to anyone you want to at that point. Ask questions that you normally may not ask. Say things that you normally won't say. But it's supposed to be a thing where you are amongst, you know, if not friends, at least people who understand. So, yeah, that has been uh, my experience. And you guys can ask me any questions you want to. Feel free to leave it in the comments, uh, you know, because this is going to go up on YouTube as its own video. Feel free to ask what you want to, and I'll be straight up honest about it. I always am. I'm, I've always been like that with you all, and I appreciate every one of you all for coming on, hanging out, chilling, chatting today. But, um, yeah, yeah, it's 10 minutes before the time that I need to walk out of here and go and get this day started. It is 50 degrees outside. Feels like it's fucking 60-something. It's beautiful. The sun is shining bright as hell. I'm going to adult Disneyland, and I'm probably going to meet another two females while I'm out there. Let's just keep it a stack. 
because yeah, that place. Whew, I just can't get caught up in a whole bunch of other shit out there. Rapongi, ooh, Rapongi can be a mess. It can be a mess, but it's so much fun. It's so much fun. But hey, everybody, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for chilling. Thanks for chatting. 